Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak is, put simply, MAGNIFICENT! <laughs> and I have been having so much fun. not get ahead of ourselves. Thank you very much to Capcom for providing me a review copy so that I can bring you guys, well, this review and so much more. Seriously, hit that subscribe and bell and you will get every single bit of Sunbreak goodness you could ever ask for and a lot that you probably couldn't ask for, but gog damn will appreciate just the same. That said, my opinion here is unfiltered, my own and uninfluenced. And it's hard not to simply say that, hey, Sunbreak is going to be up there fighting for the title of best Master Rank slash G Rank game. Inconceivable. I don't want to go all the way and make that boldest of calls yet, as of course we need time to settle into the end game and actually see how it stacks up over hundreds of hours and months, but in terms of the raw experience from the monsters to the gameplay to the story to the end game loop to the gimmick that you will get to, it is utterly phenomenal and some of the best monster huntering that has ever monster hunted. I mean, even just that sentence, the end game, yeah, Sunbreak actually has one. Rise. No, I shouldn't be so harsh. It is always the Master Rank G Rank games that is the, you know, the proper experience, the full experience, the actual experience. You can almost look at the high rank game like a taster of what's to come, the foundations upon which the mighty castle is yet to be built. And the mighty castle is beautiful. Seriously, Elgado is an absolutely phenomenal hub. Everything is close by. It looks visually stunning. It is fun. It is a triumphant combination of both function and form. And indeed, I am a massive fan of the medieval knight's code hunters, honor and chivalry for queen and country to battle. You know, that kind of, it's just, ah, oh, it works so well. And I am so happy Monster Hunter has done a game with that kind of wrapping on it. And uh, let me just tell you this, and this will sell you the game instantly. The fashion hunting experience in Sunbreak is the peak fashion hunting I've ever experienced in Monster Hunter. The sheer amount of Gorgeous looking armor of every aesthetic in this game is staggering and impressive. And oh, we are gonna have a good time with it. And of course, it contains the best character in all of Monster Hunter. What does that man think about? But again, I shan't get ahead of myself. I want to begin then by answering three main concerns, because look, we've all seen the trailers, we've played the demo, you know that the gameplay is good, because Ryze's gameplay was good, you know that the new Switch skills by and large are a lot of fun, and let me tell you, give so much to so many weapons that they could ever do before. The build variety at Endgame is, I think, going to be greater than any Monster Hunter I can remember. I have never had a more difficult time sitting there and mathing out the best initial greatsword build which I can't wait to bring you guys because there is so many options. There is so many fun yet powerful and kind of nichely uniquely skills uh, that there is just a world of options. 
Don't get me wrong, the age of affinity and attack is ever strong, but the alternate options, well, they are demanding attention, and they will be given it. There is a lot of stuff that's just, oh, that is plain cool, and the most new actual armor skills introduced in any Monster Hunter game that I can remember. It's really awesome. But again, let's talk about three things. Base Rise was wonderful. It was a diamond, but it was rough. And Sunbreakers shined it resplendent. There were three core issues with Rise. The first being difficulty. The second being the lack of a proper satisfying endgame loop. It was just kind of chain now with Talisman forever to get a little bit stronger to do kind of nothing really with it. And it just didn't kind of hit home the same way that World's Tempered Investigations did for decorations. And three, a lack of post-launch content to really keep you interested to give everything a purpose because grinding power feels a bit empty when you don't know that there's a mighty challenge on the horizon to wield it against. Now that third is easy to address and not really the fault of the base game but in any case we know Sunbreak has one hell of a roadmap so that is checked off instantly before it even launches. The other two then are more nuanced. Let's address difficulty. Dear difficulty, Rise was easy. It was very easy. But I am coming at this from someone who has put hundreds and hundreds and thousands of hours in every single Monster Hunter game, and while each game has its unique systems, of course the Wirebug gameplay is the most unique new system a Monster Hunter has ever had, you still have a lot of transferable skills. And every new Monster Hunter game is going to feel just that little bit less mean because of it. That said, I don't think it is outlandish to say that Rise was a particularly easy Monster Hunter game. Outside of the Apex Emergency event quest, outside of perhaps Crimson Glow Valstrex, there wasn't the most, like, punishing brutality. Sunbreak, well, Sunbreak will sunbreak you. Now don't get me wrong, the play through the story, the getting to end game, the uncapping your master rank, you will likely find it comfortable if you're a Monster Hunter veteran. I have one triple cap the entire way, if I recall. However, the endgame cycle, the endgame monsters, what they have done is really quite painful in the most glorious of ways. There is some real challenge to be found, especially as a lot of the gameplay is now built around encouraging a risk-reward, dangerous yet incredibly enjoyable gameplay loop that you will very much get to and see. I don't want to spoil it inherently because it's a very cool reveal tied into the story what the endgame monsters you'll be fighting are. The best way I can put it across is at the end of World, right, you were fighting tempered monsters. That was the challenge, that was the grind, that was the loop. Or even going back for the veterans out there, let's take something like 4 Ultimate where you're fighting frenzied apexes and they hurt like hell as you progress through guild quests and get better and better rewards as you face the fury that is something like level 140 Rajang. This time around, we have a system akin to that, where there is a special category of monsters that are especially difficult, that have unique mechanics, that really push you and challenge you and change the dynamic of the hunt in a really uh, thought-provoking and different way than we have ever had before. And basically, this leads me on quite nicely to address that second point of an end game. Difficulty is certainly there, and you will have a few moments that really kind of give you a wake-up call. But endgame loop-wise, I mean, yes, it is by and large nailed. The actual endgame cycle, the monsters you'll be fighting, are fun, they are different, and they are certainly challenging. There is a reason to hunt them, it ties into everything, it is not just talismans, and that makes it very, very worthwhile, and feels a lot more purposeful. Now don't get me wrong, talisman farming is still there, melding is still there, however, it has been made easier than ever. 
Not only are monster materials worth a ridiculous amount of melding points, and you're just not going to run out, they think the age of farming for melding is basically going to be dead, because just passively, you will have more melds than you know what to do with, but there is also new systems that basically let you just skip melding and instantly get talismans. The chances are still tiny, you will still be looking for that unicorn god talisman, but the method of getting there is so much less monotonous, less brutal, and, well, less, kinda, let's be honest, dull. Hell, even just being able to lock a talisman so you don't have to check if you want to meld it away or not in a rebirth is just a perfect example of a little thing that has been put into polish and make this game great. So that is really exciting. We have now a master rank game with a really creative, satisfying end game grind with purpose against genuinely fun, unique monsters that all have something going for it. And look, they have managed to make it so that even the lowest tiers of raptors are actually worthwhile when it comes to the end game, actually have purpose, have a reason to be there. The roster is no longer 90% ignorable. Eventually, that will be the case, but it will take a lot longer than it has taken in other Master Rank G Rank games, and that's really cool. So the bottom line here is, yeah, Sunbreak has addressed and then some, the two main concerns of Rise, which is difficulty and the lack of a satisfying proper fleshed out endgame loop. And that shouldn't be the most surprising thing because look, that's what a G-Rank Master Rank game does. That's the main deal of it, to add that challenge and to add that system that gets you a thousand hours out of Monster Hunter. But that's just the core mechanics at play here. The entire package is, well, I mean, next level. I really do think that calling it a masterpiece of a master rank game might not be uncalled for. Because simply from quality of life, to how gorgeous everything looks, to how well thought out and designed the returning monsters, the new monsters, the variations are, I honestly think it is one of the strongest lineup of monsters there has ever been. Arguably maybe the strongest, and everything comes together to just give you this wonderful experience of monster hunting. And a new experience through a Monster Hunter game is magic. There is nothing like it. That first time encountering each monster, that first time encountering each system, seeing that armor set unlock, investigating that new skill, being inspired to build armor sets, to try different weapons, to have different moves, to go again, to aim higher and higher. It is all here and it is all supported. It is all interwoven in an incredibly glorious manner and it comes together to be an incredible insanely satisfying experience and journey. The pure playing until your master rank unlocks, getting to the final boss, who I won't spoil in the slightest because god damn! I mean, I won't say any details, but it is up there, perhaps the best final boss in all of Monster Hunter. It is- ah! Oh! Be excited, okay, as you progress this game seriously be excited. And one thing I have to say that I'm really impressed with is how well the actual story of the game builds into the end game and justifies it. Very much like the frenzy story into the Apex Monster end game, and that is really neat to see, especially with Gore returning. It feels like it's not so much a coincidence there. But of course, I don't want to give you specific story spoilers. I simply want to say that this is one of the best Monster Hunters that has ever Monster Hunted. It is arguably the best Monster Hunter has ever been. Now, of course, it is still Rise, it is still Sunbreak, it is still Wirebugs, it is still that high-action, high-paced gameplay that if you prefer more of the slower, more natural world style, you're still not going to be as big of a fan of. Because look, it has just got faster, it has got more intense, the action is turned up to 11 here, everything is hectic, the monsters move like lightning, there isn't a dull moment while fighting, it really is like heck, and you do kind of lose that perhaps slower methodicalness to your hunt that other monster hunters have had. 
But in terms of pure enjoyment, moment to moment carnage on the hunt, yeah, this is where it's at. Not to mention both new maps are an absolute joy to hunt on, both really well designed, both filled with secrets, interesting discoveries, and really well done zones to actually do battle in. It really is a case of everywhere you look, it's better. Significantly better, appreciably better than Rise. And everywhere you look, the comparison to other G Rank Master Rank games is that this is up there, as I said earlier, with the best of them. Hell, when you look at the Rampage and see it's not there, you're also really bloody happy! <laughs> Look, okay, the rug page wasn't the worst, but I am happy that it has been replaced with the follower quest system, which is also really neat. It is just cool, if a little bit corny, to hunt with these NPCs that you hopefully will grow attached to over the course of the campaign. It's a really different type of experience, and it adds a fun little single-player-esque mini-story element to work through, full of unlocks and rewards uh, that make it feel really, really satisfying to playthrough. And there is a lot of voice acting, a lot of chatter between them. It's charming, that's the word. It really is charming, the follower system. And there's a lot more nuance there than really meets the eyes. And everything has a lot more nuance than meets the eyes, and everything's more open. The buddy system is more customizable, potent, and useful than it's ever been. Everything feels easier to do, but better. And I don't mean easier in terms of difficulty, it just makes more sense. There's a lot of systems now implemented that essentially make you go, I can't believe that wasn't how it always was. Even from something small that we've known about for a while, like being able to wall run just by running into a wall. But even to harken back to the buddy system I just mentioned, you can now essentially just choose what skills your buddies have. No more rolling random skills, hoping for the best, cycling through buddies, hiring them like it's going out of fashion. It's just, hey, Choose what palico you want, choose what skills it has, and have fun hunting. And that really is kind of the nail on the head. Everything is set up here in Sunbreak to the purpose, to the razor-thin, needle-sharp, laser-precision goal of have maximum fun hunting. And yes, that is really what you do. And the monsters, of course, the target of said hunt, are the stars of the show. Every returning monster has never looked better, never fought better. But even the base rise monsters into their master rank forms have so many new moves, like so many new moves to catch you off guard, to keep things interesting. Even the older monsters that have had many G rank forms have got new tricks up their sleeves and that's really exciting to see. There is thought, care and attention and detail gone into essentially every part of it. And Ultimately, when it comes to the other side of the coin, the negatives, the criticisms, there's only really two that stand out to me. The first is that a few of the new Switch skills feel a little bit lackluster, and that's a little bit of a shame, but that was the case with Base Rise. You can't make everything wonderful, sort of to be expected, but still a little bit sad. The other one, and the much bigger one, is that there is a period past the final boss, past when your master rank unlocks, past when you're grinding into the end game, that that grind becomes a really big grind. You have to at least get to master rank 100 in Sunbreak, and the time between 50 and 100 was... Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's it's a bit sloggy. I feel like there could have been a little bit more to both make that quicker and a little bit more for you to do in that band, and it kind of puts this weird speed bump in an otherwise really well-paced experience, and that is a little bit of a shame. That by far and away is my biggest sticking point when it comes to this game. But that said then, I mean, that is Sunbreak. It addresses the concerns of Rise. It adds so much more. It gives a really cool, unique, and fun endgame system, endgame monsters, an entire mechanic to play with, ties in beautifully with the story, has so many new systems that really inspire a lot from you, from new armor skills to new monsters to new mechanics to quality of life. 
it just has it going on. There's nothing I can really point at and go, that's a bit weird, I don't like that they've done that, that's not that fun. Like, it was just after one after the other, back to back, oh, this is great, oh, this is great, oh, this is great, along with some seriously hype surprises along the way that I will even, not even slightly hint at or spoil in any capacity, but you are going to have a few fist pump moments of, yes, oh my god, yes, and that's really, really cool. And as someone who's played every single Monster Hunter, yeah, this is going to be up there with 4 Ultimate, with Iceborne, with 3 Ultimate, as I think the very best that Monster Hunter has ever been, as long as you enjoy that high-paced, high-action Rise style. So, yeah, I hope you have found that somewhat useful, and enjoy your sunbreaking so very soon. Like if you've enjoyed this, subscribe and hit the bell for more and all of the sunbreak to come. Let me know if you've got any burning questions, and if I can answer them, I will. Consider supporting this channel on Patreon down below, and until we meet again, a good bye. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes, bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye